My name is Mary Levelholtz. I'm the Dean of the College of Professional Studies, and it's my privilege to uh, welcome you tonight um, to see um, our earlier bookshop film and have a discussion with the filmmaker, as I can now call Olivia. Um, that's an amazing thing to say about so recent a graduate, that she's a filmmaker. We hold high ambitions for our students in the College of Professional Studies, um, and we'll educate them um, in ways that advance them in life, um, that fulfill their dreams, um, that help them make their connection to the world and the mark that they want to make in the world. Um, and yet, it, you know, honesty, modesty would compel me to admit, and I'm sure Cynthia would agree, it is not every capstone project in the film class that um, has, has seen world premieres um, at many an independent film festival um, as quickly as the Burlier Poetry Bookshop, the last sacred place for poetry, um, has seen. As you know, um, especially our distinguished guests from um, the bookshop itself, um, the Burlier is the last all poetry bookstore in the world, um, located in Cambridge and Harvard Square, um, just off the main drag there. Um, it has an amazing and distinguished history, as you'll see from still photography um, on the site um, of poetry readings, um, great lions and lionesses of the 20th century. Um, it was certainly a name that resonated to me from my undergraduate days as an English major at Stanford and in graduate school at Yale. Um, it had a legend that moved far. How did it reach Olivia? Um, she learned about earlier when a friend wrote about the store, she began filming events for them, which then turned into a thesis project. Um, her film has been now shown in multiple film festivals, including the Massachusetts Independent Film Festival, the World Premier Film Awards, the Barcelona Planet Film Festival, and more. Um, again, I've learned um, much, even just within the last, last 15 minutes, about how co complicated an art film is, how complicated an art video is, um, how many things need to come together in order for the sort of production that we're, we're about to see to happen. And I've also come to appreciate, um, having talked to Olivia and um, the friends who've helped her on this journey, how much has to happen after the film is produced in order to bring this film into the world. And I look forward to our, in our discussion afterwards, sharing that experience of how the, the technical work of filmmaking became the social work of bringing this to the world and sharing it with the help of every one of you um, in the room tonight who are part of that journey. So thank you, and let us begin. bookstore and it has been there like 90 years. That's like unbelievable for me. And I see that somehow spiritual on there and the most things I, when I see that also uh, bookstores closing one by one in the Boston area and I feel like uh, I want to do something. Keep that continue or we call documentation of bookstore they've been having so many rich histories. And I also was thinking about that, why did the technology develop so quick? How can we preserve the culture, the old traditional part? How can you make it to going together, not like that, because we developed the technology, then we have to close to all the old traditional business, like a bookstore or some type of store, something like that. To do this, um, I can imagine many people walking into the store and having thoughts like that about how different this is from your Barnes and Noble or your ebook, um, different and valuable and compelling. Um, but to realize those thoughts, to turn them into something, you had to, you had to take the next step, which is to come up to someone in the store and say, 
and introduce yourself. I don't, I don't know, tell us, and, and make yourself known. You had to make a, a connection, a human connection. Um, that's a challenging next step for many of us, you know, not to mention every other kind of human connection that, that is required to get this in so many places. How did you make that first approach? So when I walk in the bookstore and and uh, my, my partner, Mong Yan Lin, who's an editor, we walk into the bookstore, and Elizabeth was walking in the bookstore there. And we introduce themselves, but we don't know much about poet, and we are, our English is not like speaking fluent. And I try to speak my idea about, I would like to take uh, some video about this bookstore because of the rich history and Elizabeth said, oh, we are Gloria. I think, what is Gloria? I'm thinking of mine, I was so funny. And I, I think I said, I'm, I'm going home to check in what, what is Gloria. <laughs> and then, but then I learned that Elizabeth likes a painting and she's a very good artist. Then I started talking with Elizabeth about painting and fire because I also started painting. And after that, I saw in some Elizabeth some of my painting and she liked some of my work. And we started keep talking and chatting. <laughs> and then I said, oh, I would like to have uh, contact the owner and the bookstore and like to take the video and uh, when the poet had to come in. Yeah. And she said, oh, yeah. So a mutual benefit um, and mutual interest. I guess let, let me share one reaction that I had to the film that I, I think is successful. I must say that watching the film, I kept like, sort of, my eyes would be walking to this end of the bookshelves and going over over here. It's a browsing experience, you know, of, of that addictive quality that's um, that combination of the spines and then the pages shown and then then you're back to the, the person talking, but you're also sort of that, that, oh, what's that next one? Oh, I see, you know, I, I see Pinsky's, you know, version of Dante, you know, there it's just, oh, oh, that, and, and evoking that experience of, of the desire to browse, um, I think is, I feel is both a tribute to the store and also to, to the film that you do other folks here have questions for Olivia um, or observations about what it was like to work with her? I, I really love that bookstore. I love that feeling of walking in and that, you know, sometimes you pause right when you get inside that door because there's so much to absorb in that small space and, you know, all those, all those voices. Um, how did you handle the technical challenges of, of gathering so much footage and moving around in a space, particularly during a reading, when there is no space? And we saw you, right, in one. Yeah, yeah we, we did saw see you in one. <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah, so um, so when I walk in the bookstore, then I start to contact Elizabeth. I check on the website when they have a poet reading. I just walk in, I said, uh, I'm willing to take your footage of your poet reading. I can send it to you after I build the video. And so since that, I, I think it's uh, 2006 in the spring, and I start to go to every event when I'm available, I will come to take the footage of all the poet reading. And sometimes, uh, yeah, it's a very small space, and there are a lot of people. I always stay in one corner, so sometimes when I stay in one corner, I cannot move anymore. <laughs> so sometimes I try to manage it. I stay one corner in this side, and next time I try to stay another corner, and I try to have a different angle of the bookstore, get them more views. Yeah. Um, Michelle, thank you so much. That was a gift, really, a wonderful gift. And um, you've preserved so much memory. Right? The stories were are so significant all of the voices that you brought forward. And I wonder, were you surprised by the level of emotion, um, the level of memory, the level of importance that you heard? Yeah, I think the, the poet is like, a, like every other artist. They are really sensitive. They see this world is different. and see the 
uh, spirit, like a community. When the band makes us, he is a well-known well poet. When whatever he stays on the on on the interview, and he's really in touch, and he get a lot of uh, footage. But unfortunately, because of his speak is really slow, <laughs> and I didn't get a lot of uh, his uh, footage on it. But I'm learning from him from all the poets and other ones. And I remember when I interviewed him, I said, are you still want to go into, are you recommend other people be a poet and study poetry? He said, no, I'm not recommend <laughs> anyone to do it. I said, if you get the chance, are you still going to be a poet and poetry? He said, yes, I was still doing that. I'm born for that, I don't have any choice. There was a beautiful structure to the whole uh, video. Like I see it progressing as a story. So it was the introduction, then the importance, historical importance, and then there was the problems that it was. How did you actually decide on the structure of the whole thing, or was it spontaneous? Um. So that is a that's one is when I doing a start on the editing and structure, and I've been thinking about that. I was thinking it's a, it's really difficult because I have a 90 years history and I only have a going to present a half hour and are going to be my thesis project and how can I contain a 90 years history in half hour film? That's really challenging. That's why I think that I will going to focus on the current owner. And even I know that the last owner been stay there like 30 years, but I think I'm going to stay on a focus on current issue and how is the Gloria be right now, but of course being so, so in that I need to tell a little bit story about before story, so I major focus on the current owner and how's the issue they face right now in the Gloria. But unfortunately, I don't know if anyone know that the owner, if any, they passed, just passed away in June 17. And, but his spirit chose also, I think it will keep going with us and the uh, current owner, Carol Mankiti, and then the families intend to keep that going. I'm happy to hear that. And I hope that they will move in the next century. That's what I really want to see. Yes. How long did it take for you to direct write down the story, direct the entire, shoot the entire, uh, everything in the bookstore and edit it before you could produce it to the first film festival? Mm, I, for, um, I, I started, I started filming it. The footage is nearly like a one year early. So in that time, I think that I would like to record in that bookstore event, poet reading, that's the real happening, the regular bookstore on uh, Gloria. And until like uh, the last semester on uh, April or May, then we, I decided to turn it to the thesis project. Then I started to interview and put all those footage and um, poet reading together. So all the poet reading about the poet is like before, before the thesis project. So I take a part of them to turn into the, the whole field. Yeah, I'm wondering like how you, which, how you chose the particular readings, the particular poets that you chose. I mean, because I know that you have a lot of footage of a lot of poets. So what did something stand out in those particular people for you or? Yeah, some of the poets I really like the poet like that Andrew Karen Elvis and beautiful <coughs> hurt. It's a beautiful piece and also <coughs> and um and um, Natasha and also what I picked also because I, I have uh, the time limit and I don't want to get the full piece of a poet inside after it finishes as a, like take twenty minutes. So I pick up the soft one and I've been quite interview more poets, but unfortunately, couple footage I get lost. Like uh, I have a footage with Peter, also well, but 
for technical problem, the recording doesn't work, and after we come home and see that it's no voice. Oh no. <laughs> it's no voice, and then I, 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 I contact the poet again, and I said, can I re-interview you? He said, oh, I'm out of Boston right now, and he's from UK. Oh. So, and I have a, like a two or three poets, and after the interview, I find out that I didn't know voice. Oh. You have interviewed a lot of people in the film. I'm wondering uh, how, I mean, uh, do, do you need to talk to them in person before you shoot uh, a footage? Uh, how, how can you make them to tell their stories? In front of the camera, I think some of the people may be very nervous when you start shooting. Um, they are mostly they are really friendly. When I request that, I said I'm going to make a documentary film of Gloria. I would like to interview you, and they always say yes. And I'm so lucky to meet all of you, the nice and friendly people. And I prepare for my question, but and before like I start up interview them and I started to talk with them and one and my partner Mong Yan Ni and she set up the camera then we started to check a little bit and talk about uh, Gloria and when is the reading how's the boat as something a small check and then after that then we I started to ask her question and them questions and also we would like uh, we would keep the cameras on sometimes I keep the cameras on like a uh, continue and until like we say goodbye. We never stop the camera. We try to get something that they say something's really valuable and we don't want to lose the footage. Yeah, and for the documentary, it doesn't matter, interview or something, you keep the camera on, so always a good, but just like <laughs> until your editing is painful when you see all the footage. Can I ask a, um question that's, um, I asked you why the Growlier, um, would you tell us why Northeastern or why Northeastern's program in digital media? What drew you here? Um, that is a really, <laughs> um, that is, uh, I think that sometimes uh, life, you don't know where you're going to be. I think that that is, like, um, I didn't plan to come to um, Northeastern, I, I study art, but, and then I, I'm thinking about I, if I can continue my education, what we like to study, and I'm thinking about uh, art therapy in Leslie. Unfortunately, but they said, you need a psychology credit, and I don't have it. <laughs> then I think I should, then I need to study something else. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, one of my friends, really close friend, and she said, oh, I got a a sentence from the Northeastern. I said, oh, Northeastern? Uh, I said, yeah, it's a pretty good school. I said, then I started checking out the school program. Then I think um, I'm, I'm studying fine art and undergrad. And fine art is like two dimensions, I think, as a um, video. And they, then right now, I went, when I, in that time, when I really, really think it as an art form, they have a space when the real things happening. They have a tree more dimension, I think is that is another way I can extend it as an art form. I think it's okay, I probably would like to study videos. Yeah. And then also because the school is like, when I apply, they just accept, get a sentence, then I did not apply any other school. <laughs> <laughs> it clicked. Yes, sir. It's such a rich uh, subject that you chose, you know, artists, poetry, and uh, I'm very happy to see how uh, the poets, the, the, the whole flavor of that field of poetry and art is really expressed very well in your documentary. And I, I tip my hat to you for, for making this project. I'm looking forward to seeing the um, graffiti way documentary next. So like, I know that the project is your thesis. Um, so like, how does it help you to like move on with your career now? Um, and uh, like, how we can, um, so with this 
this um, movie, this film, documentary film, um, how we can like stay in touch with, um, like how can we spread out, you know, like how we can uh, do the marketing mm -hmm. to help the bookstore. And so the, the first thing is that I, I, in the beginning I'm not sure, I, I, really, I really want to say that I'm doing a documentary of Gloria, I want other people to see and know this bookstore. So in the first my step in that time is that I'm going to the film festival and so I submit to some international and also local film festival like the Mass chooses an independent film festival and it's a great that I got include inside the film festival and I went to the event, I get to meet the other filmmakers and the founder of in Mass in Dine and they are really nice and generous and they are like uh, they are really helping if I have any questions. I said how do I register my copyright? How do I make a DVD? And how do I I ask them all kind of questions because I have no idea. And but they all so nice to give me all useful idea because they have more experience and with their help like uh, some other filmmakers so I s prepared my second project is the graffiti Ali it's legal graffiti movement and they are so generous to write me the support letters and tell them oh they like my film and Gloria and they believe that I can finish that film so and this year, beginning of this year, I received a Cambridge Art Grant for that. And then I started to talk to, I think it's, I also want other people to know about this field. I contact to the local library, Cambridge Library, and they going to like, they already screened the field on a September. Mm -hmm. and, and I just get a, another confirmation for the Cambridge Library on the Central Square branch. They're going to screen, they always schedule it on uh, November 26th. And I meet uh, like a, sometimes it's just like networking. I meet a friends who's alumni in the Park University, and the English department of uh, going to schedule the screening on the spring semester. Yeah, uh, it's right now. It's the full document, doc documentary is not available on YouTube yet. Only trial, and you're welcome to join the Facebook page and the uh, website. That is really useful, helpful to spread out. Then. Because I will post the next event in November to the Facebook page as well. Uh, they they have the trial to connect into my one. Yeah. And the Gloria has one and the documentary field has one as well. So in some ways what we've heard about from Olivia is that there's um, social life poetry that's contemporary poetry that's realized in the film itself and then there's the social life of small independent Filmmaking, documentary filmmaking, that is is the tissue behind the, the scenes that you let us get a glimpse of, um, and those worlds probably have something in common in terms of their willingness to be helpful and engaged um, in settings that are intimate, like this one, um, and have that kind of power in them. Um, would anyone like some? Closing words about those powers or any other. I just want to say that we're very happy that Olivia made this documentary of the story because um, she's making history for us. I mean, you know, she's adding to the story of the story. And there's still a lot of people like. Students often walk by going to class, and then one day they decide to come in and they'll say, this is a totally different world. And I think she opened up that world. Mm -hmm. So we're very happy that she's done such a wonderful job at the moment showing it. When I learning about the documentary filmmaker, they said, you were speaking somebody's voice.
different, they are not prepared to speak. You see the value, and you you being that voice to speak to them. And when I think I when I made the film for Gloria, I want other people to see that the Gloria with 90 years history poetry bookshop was there. And there were so many people living in Half Square, and they don't know about these histories. And yeah, I hope that they appreciate some things who's already building a spiritual over there. And for right now, the technology can make everything really quick in a couple of years, and they can build in any sense of buildings, but how can they build a 90 years history? Mm -hmm. They need a 90 years to build it. Mm -hmm. The technology cannot replace this history. Okay. I want to say, Olivia mentioned that uh, Mr. Mankiti, who was my husband, passed away this year, but myself and our four children have promised to continue his dream about the poetry bookstore and to continue his legacy with it. So we're going to reach 100 years <laughs> or more. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you to Olivia. Again, a round of applause, everyone. Thank you for joining us.